rejoicing as we, as we gathered, haven't we? Welcome good, and good morning, church. It is good to see all of you here for us to be together, and we are grateful for those who are joining us uh, via the internet. And a word about our broadcast service beginning next Sunday, that service moves to 11 o'clock instead of 10. Our broadcast service will be at 11, our worship service at 11, and we will be in, a, in our sanctuary space. We give thanks to God for all of you present this day and for God's grace and mercy and love in all of our lives. And with that joyful and rejoicing, we continue in worship this morning.
worship you if it puts me in the fire i rejoice because you're there too i won't be born by feelings i hold fast to what is true if the cross brings transformation then i'll be crucified with you because death is just the doorway into resurrection life if I join you in the sufferings, then I join you when you rise. And when you return in glory with all the angels and the saints, my heart will still be singing and my song will be the same. continue with our scripture reading this morning. It's found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. Hear now the word of the Lord. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things and see I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven and they worshiped him. And he returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Do you remember the time when you first began to get an idea of what you were called to do or be. Children say, it's what, what I'm gonna be when I grow up. Do you remember? Probably um, there were a lot of things that happened for all of us along the way to enable us to look back and remember that time. One of my granddaughters has said uh, more than once that she is going to be, when she grows up, she's going to be a lawyer during the weekdays and she's going to be a chef. She says, not just any chef, a famous chef every night. And then on the weekend, she's going to be an artist. So I'm thinking I need to add more to the college fund, don't you think, with all of that? But I love to hear children talk about it, but, but we've had those moments, haven't we? Some of them happen early. We've known for a long time. Some of them happen later in life. We take a course in college and all of a sudden we go, oh my goodness, this is what I'm supposed to do or be. There's a little bit of that in this text this morning. This is the very last Sunday of the church season of Easter. 
It is Ascension Sunday, and we just heard the text in from Luke's gospel, the only one who really tells us about Jesus ascending back to the right hand of the Father. We say that in the creed, don't we? That he sits at the right hand of the Father Almighty. Jesus has come to us, to earth, to be our Savior, come from love, to love us, and returns to love. I love that part. Uh, let's take a look at what this text might have, what Jesus and God might say to us through it this morning as we are celebrating Ascension Sunday today. The first thing I notice is something we've heard in Luke's gospel as well as other gospel stories. When they begin to, when people encounter Jesus very often, he does it in the temple, he does it on the road to Emmaus, he opens their minds to the scripture. Do you remember hearing those words? It's in the text today and it's said before. He opens their minds to the scripture. And it brings me back to something I, I say to you all the time. I may have even said it last week. It's when we were together. There's a reason they call it Bible study. We can certainly read it, but we need to kind of immerse ourselves into it. There's always something new to learn from the scripture. And I think those of us who maybe have been reading for a long time and those stories that have become very special to us, we have a tendency, like, oh yeah, I know that story, I know that story, you know, turn over it. We're missing opportunities for God to give us a fresh word, new insight. And Jesus is doing that here with the disciples as he comes to them on this day when he ascends back to the right hand of the Father. He opens the scriptures. He begins to show them again, as he's done before, that this is one story from God. He even says in here, it thus it is written. We've heard Jesus say that before in other encounters, if you remember. When that's almost as if the equivalent of saying, this is God's plan. This is part of what God has planned, had planned since the beginning of when humanity had that, what I call for you, the apple incident, you know, when sin entered the picture, God began working on the plan to reunite all of us back with God. And so Christ is telling the disciples this, reminding them again. He's giving those last-minute instructions, isn't he? Letting them know that the scripture is one story, one God, one love for whom they have been called and, and will tell. And then, then the disciples hear Jesus talk about his own life. The Messiah came to suffer, to die, and to be raised up. They know this, of course. But this is the major incident, if you will, that changed their lives, that so changed them that they could not be the people they were before. They could not let go of the story. This was the major event that enabled them to grasp hold of God's story in a fresh new way. And Jesus reminds them that of the forgiveness, his death, his life, his death, his resurrection, was for the forgiveness of their sins, of our sins, of all who is to come and be. Forgiveness, repentance, so that we might turn away from that sin and join in this relationship with God as God has planned. A beautiful reminder in just a few words here. And then he tells the disciples something that may have scared them, may have encouraged them, may have maybe all of the above. He said, you are my witnesses. As we think about this, it is our encounter with Jesus Christ that becomes our story, that leads 
us to live in a certain way that leads us to come together for worship, that leads us to invite others to be a part of this story, a witness, our own story. This week I had opportunity in praying through this text to think about my story. And what comes to mind, of course, would be places, because I have told you before that I grew up moving around some and then uh, just kind of continued that with my tendency as a pastor. But I have places where I remember, but it's the people that are a part of my story. The older couple, when I was a child in a church where, well, it's now a carpet mill in Dalton, Georgia, and there is a huge dogwood tree that they left that was right, uh, the building was kind of wrapped around it, the church building was. And when the carpet mill bought all of that corner and our church moved to a new place and built a new spot, they left the tree and they built the mill around that dogwood tree. But there was a couple there, um, the Meadows were their last name, and they were not young people at all, but they were part of the youth group. In that, they regularly provided food and regularly invited a, us over to their home to, uh, to just share in fellowship with them. And I remember the youth people, uh, all of us as youth gathering in their place. I remember especially when Mrs. Meadows was dying and the youth came over that evening and I can still see in my mind us gathered in her small bedroom. We had lines of two around the room and we prayed over her. She and her husband are part of my story. The faith they lived, the life they showed, it's part of who I am. And you have those stories. And Jesus is reminding the disciples here about all he did, all he said, and how it has changed their lives. People become the story, the witnesses. It can be scary though, can't it? But it, we live it out in different ways. And Jesus knowing as he does, that it can be a little daunting, it can be frightening, tells them to wait in Jerusalem for the power. Now he is leaving to go back to God and he says power is coming, power to what? For them to be witnesses, power for them to endure, power, power for them to carry on the story and to live into that faith and grace and repentance and forgiveness that God is offering. And he says, wait, wait for it. It's hard to wait, isn't it? It's hard to wait. I've been catching up recently on doctor appointments that I didn't check up some things that I did not get during the pandemic. And I've had to wait longer than normal. And I've had to work on my patients thinking that I may one day be the person who needs more time of, of the doctors than now. But I, I'll be honest, I had to remind myself of that is that I'm going, you know, it's hard to wait. I can only imagine the disciples being given this commission, this movement forward from Christ, reminding who they are. They have a story to tell, and they are to be the witnesses, which means tell the story, continue the work, wait for the power. And they don't even know what the power is. We do, because we read the story, right? They haven't lived it yet. And next week, we will read the story again of the coming of the Holy Spirit. But they had to wait. So... I couldn't help but apply this waiting to God's timing. And as I think of my story with Christ and my story in the life of the community of faith, I think of times when I had to wait for an answer, wait for the next step, wait for the direction, wait for what may happen, when it may happen. I didn't particularly like it. But then when it came or when it happened, you go, ah, God's timing, always right. 
we still have to wait. We've been waiting, haven't we, for over a year. And it will not be our last wait. So Jesus is reminding all of us, there is a way, but it is God's plan, God's work, God's power that will enable us to live into our life with God. And lastly, in the last few verses of this, we shouldn't skip over this part. It says that Jesus goes and blesses them. But did you notice there are no words? We don't know what he used to bless them. How, what did he speak to them as he's leaving? But he held out his hands. And, and then the, the sign of blessing is ancient. It is often this. It can be this. But he blessed them. So I begin to think, perhaps he gave them what they needed to hear. Those who needed to hear forgiveness and encouragement, he blessed them with that. Those who needed to hear that their empowerment will give you words that you never knew you had and strength and, and what gumption to, to be with people to tell your story and to change lives, that perhaps that was in the blessing. I encourage you today, this afternoon perhaps, to think what might be God's blessing for you and your life at this day and this time. Because you see, Jesus has modeled for us in his life the life we live. And this text today is the life we live. We have come from love and we live in love for one another and God. And we go to love. And we are to spread this repentance, forgiveness, and grace because we are the church. And we have been changed by the story of the gospel, by Jesus Christ the living son of the living God. And the gospel and the work of the kingdom will go on and does go on because of us. So what would be our blessing? What is our blessing to the world? One of the things I grieved about during the pandemic so much as we began to regather in the safest way that we could, was the fact that we couldn't pass the peace. Uh, where we would go and we would hug one another or shake one another's hands and say, peace of Christ be with you. And then there were good mornings and all those things. And I, if you remember, those of you who've been here, I would say, I wish you could see it from my end. I always love to pass the peace and then I love to watch you do it. It was with joy we came to one another. What were we going to do in the pandemic? So we offered the sign of blessing. And did it even for the screen, for those at home. And I truly believe the power of God works in that blessing. And so Sarah, may I change things up this morning? And can we bless one another now and then after the blessing you bless you and Matt bless us with music. So, and then we will pray. So as we celebrate and remember the ascension of Jesus Christ and our calling and our gifts and our transformation in Christ, may we bless one another with peace. I invite you to stand and bless as you are comfortable and receive those blessings. <clears throat>
We give thanks for the bells and the joy they bring. Thank you, Beth and, and others who are here who are a part of that and continue to practice safely. Friends, let us bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer. New every morning are your blessings, great God of life. And all day long you are working for good in the world. With these words of scripture and morning prayer, O oh God, we come before you. Our hearts are smiling. Our lives are filled with thankfulness for who you are. O oh Lord, you continue to bring us through a long season where we needed your special protection. And we praise you and bless you. We thank you for your gift of your son, Jesus Christ, and for how his life, his forgiveness and grace has indeed transformed and is transforming our lives. Oh Lord, we thank you for who you are. We praise you for the gifts of this life together, of being able to gather of birthdays, of anniversaries, of graduations, of all celebrations. Oh Lord, we thank you for these of life and for our participation in them and for how they are a part of this life we live. We also bring you this morning our prayers of concern and care. And we thank you, O oh God, for the movement in our country of safety toward protection from this pandemic. And as we give thanks and continue to model safe behavior for all of us, we know there are so many places in the world where the pandemic is not moving in that direction. And so we pray for medicine, for healthcare workers with strength and encouragement, for people to have hope, we pray for your work in each life, in each place, O oh Lord. Partner our prayers for goodness and health and healing for all. We pray for all of those this day who are ill in any way, O oh Lord. We ask for those that they may be given your strength and courage your hope for wholeness, and that body, mind, and spirit are indeed in your loving care. We pray for all who mourn and ask for your healing, comfort, and grace. We pray for those who are seeking work, and we pray for those who are hungry, or lost, or afraid, or anxious, and we ask that we may be part of their healing through our prayers, through our gifts, through our care. We pray for places in your world, O oh Lord, where there is war, where there is fighting, where people are dying. Forgive us, O oh God, for our inhumanity to one another and help us to listen better to love deeper, to care more boldly. Help us to come to good solutions in our differences with one another. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the gift of your church, for all the ways we have been able to be your people, and we pray for that to continue and grow as you use us. Hear us now, loving Father, as together we pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
And now for all who are able, will you stand and receive this blessing as we move further into this day. May God, our Father, who loves us more than we could ask for or imagine, may Jesus Christ, our Savior, who has forgiven us and does every day, and may the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all as we move into this day where we are his witnesses in all we do and say. Go forth with the joy of the Lord. Amen and amen. Thank you.